Good morning. Welcome to my garden. Just having my cup of tea. Mm, nice in the garden. While I have my brew, making plans for what to do today. Okay, what do we want to do on this Wednesday, the 3rd of July? We want to net. I ordered this net with the intention of netting this cherry tree. It's a very big piece. I can't remember how big, but it's huge. And it's got quite decent sized small holes, quite small. Anyway. I am going to use this. I bought a fleece tunnel. It's about three meters long. The fleece was rubbish on it to be fair. But the, t the wire hoops that make up the framework for it, they're good. So I am going to take those out of the um, fleece. I'm going to cut some of this net and I'm going to thread it some of the loops through the net and put it over those carrots so that whatever's nip, nipping the tops off can't do it anymore. I've already chucked um, a shade net over it just for last night. So uh, that that is done for the night but it's too heavy to leave on constantly so that needs to get changed. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> so that's job number one. And the other job that I want to get done today is plant out those flower beds at the front of the house. And of course it's Wednesday, so it's um, tomato feeding day. I'm now doing that twice a week. They've got two trusses. So they're doing really well. Tomatoes in the greenhouse are very exciting. And I think I've actually found the first outdoor tomatoes, but they're very, very tiny, it's really hard to see. But I think they're there, I think they're cherries. That's why they're so tiny. So I'm just going to have to be patient. Patience is not one of my strong points at the moment. <laughs> well, actually, it is. But I want to see those tomatoes start growing. Uh, everything else in the greenhouse is doing great. What else did I want to do today? Just a general weed, I think. Oh, yeah. Take out the blown cauliflowers and feed them to the chickens. And plant up the new ones that I've got in pots waiting to go in. Something ate all my Cavalonera inside the tunnel. That's why I've decided not to use straw anymore as a mulch. It just targeted them. Must be the youngest and sweetest. So now I have no Cavalonera. Devastating. Devastating, it is. <laughs> well, it's not the end of the world, is it? I'll try again next year and know better. If it fails, learn from it make some changes and try again next year and if it fails again grow something else <laughs> but everything's doing really well the beans are shooting up the little ones have germinated now so i know oh, that's just reminded me of another job string that second bean arch Right, magnificent. That's the plan. Five jobs. The pigeon that's responsible for my carrot nibbling. It's just flown into the tree, in the last chestnut tree. She sits and watches me, you know, on the roof. 
between pigeons and slugs. <laughs> I've lost a few plants, but luckily, nothing of terrible import. Uh, it'll be fine. So we are going to make a net tunnel to protect the carrots from the pigeons. Sorry. <laughs> We're going to make a net three times now. We're going to make a net tunnel to protect the carrots from the pigeons. We're going to plant up the flower beds at the front of the house. We're going to feed all the greenhouse tomatoes. We're going to remove the blown collies and replace them. We are going to string up the second bean arch. That's a nice list of jobs. And the sun's about to come back out, I think, so it might get bright around here very suddenly. <laughs> bit weird filming at the front of the house. We do get a lot of <laughs> pigeon. We do get a lot of um, walkers coming by. They must think I'm bonkers if they see me doing this. So I've got you quite discreetly hidden behind a chair. So now all they'll do is think that crazy woman's talking to herself. <laughs> oh well. Oh well, let them think it. What do we care? Okay, cool. I didn't record properly what I did yesterday. I tried to remember. <laughs> but you know what it's like. You sit down at the end of the day, try and remember what you've done. You think, hmm, what did I do? What did I do? Hmm. Well, if I get through this list, we'll have a right pile of achievements for the day, won't we? So I'm going to start and I'm going to, unusually, you're going to come and watch me work, if you want to stick around. This is the tunnel thing that I bought <laughs> from the Debo Cheap Shop. The wires are what I want. That I'll save. I'm just going to remove the wires because they're going to be perfect for other carrots. Probably I'll only need about like, three of them. <laughs> I just found my old scissors. They've been missing for months. <laughs> okay. I've cut the net in. It's approximately a metre wide. And I'm going to thread the wire I'm going to come down a bit because I need some of it to overlap at the end, don't I? I'm going to come in to about there and try and keep it on that line as it goes through, which is not easy. There we are. We're done. That should be enough. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put this in place, work out how, the length that I need for it, and then thread the other two. <laughs> As you can see, that shade netting is far too heavy. Let's whip that off. <laughs> Quite whip it off, is it? Okay. That's off. Let's pump this end into place. It's going to start here. Brushing up against tomatoes. Smells amazing. I'm going to cover the beets as well. Anything that looks like it might. That's a beet leaf miner in it. We've got the leaf miner there. Let's show you. Definitely got the leaf miner in there though. Let's 
so I'm removing anything that looks like this at the moment and it's going in the household bin. Here's another one look. Classic trails, aren't they? Do you know what? Without Terry King from the robotic allotment alerting me to this, I'd have put it down to scorching from the sun and the weird weather that we've been having. Look at that. There's one of the where one of the eggs was. That that creature that's made that tunnel through that leaf has come from. So I'll just stretch it over the rest of the way. I'll weight it down. I'll weight it down at these ends. Fingers crossed. That is the last improvement with a bit of luck. Just enough to keep. These crops protected for a little while until they can get going. Hmm. I'm going to have to give this garden a watering, I think. Dry. Mind you, under the surface it's nice and damp. It's just up here on the surface. Now I've got seeds in the surface, so I'm going to water it all later. Okay, well, that's one job done. Hurrah!
Oh, hey, hey. It's a bean arch with character. <laughs> Fabulous. Well. That was hot work and took a while. But I'm glad that bean arch is strung up. <laughs> I can take that one off my list, can't I? The next job will be plant up the flower beds at the front. I'm not feeding the greenhouse yet, I'll do it later on. It's far too hot. For watering. You see the clouds? It's just white, fluffy, floating away clouds. Beautiful sunshine and the odd little bit of shade to make it bearable. Magnificent day. Got to remember to enjoy these days, haven't we? Make the most of them. Harley's found himself a nice little spot in the shade. And I think I'm going to sit here and soak up some sunshine for a little while. See you in a tick. Good morning, I'm Julia and welcome back to my garden. We're a couple of days after the rest of that video that you've just seen, because my battery ran out of power just as I was about to film doing the front garden. So what you're going to see now is the finished product. Well, once it's grown it will be the finished product. What you're seeing now is how I've planted it. So, shall we have a look? It's very beautiful. It's huge. That's a goodly sized rose. Isn't that pretty and it smells lovely. Look at it with the dew drops on. Gorgeous. This is one of the beds that I did. We've got the gentle Hermione David Austin rose in the middle. Got a Cleatris wrapping around at the side. There's some freesias at the back as well as freesias in the front because it has to be seen from both sides because the house is over there and the front gate is down this way. And then there's a lavender at that side and just a pink one of the pinks that I bought there so that's been planted up and there's this bed down here which is um, going to be a looping bed it's going to be loopings all the way around with the globe artichoke in the middle that should get quite big and then these should spill out at the sides and grow outwards and make the bed look a lot bigger than it actually is and then again we've got another lavender and a few poppies and Canterbury bells down at the front there, just filling in for the moment because it's everything's very young. All looking very healthy and really seems to be pleased to be in the ground at last. <laughs> One of my favourites, mostly because those are my dad's 10 year old seeds. Much, much smaller than the rest, granted, but I have every, every confidence that they're going to grow up to be fine plants and should be there quite as permanently as I can and if, it, if they die back in future at some point I'll take seeds from them and then they will be perpetuated and my dad's 10 year old seeds will live on. I'll put some of the pinks in this border as well so we'll just run through what's in it. We've got pinks, antiriums, cosmos, sage, what are they? Stocks. And stocks and cosmos and look at these cosmos flowers aren't they little beauties these are called double click and they were supposed to be an assorted mix of colors but only the pink ones seem to have come up you've got the uh, lemon thyme down there more antirhinums sorry looking cleome sorry looking antirhinum better looking cleomes better looking antirhinums about to pop into flower antirhinum of course there is the uh, chives and the bay and that is an oregano I think oh yeah oregano country cream which I've not got a spot for at the moment and I've popped underneath in there a Greek oregano that I grew from seed. So that one's got a spot there. That's the Greek oregano. Those are stocks. <laughs> uh, zinnias, about to flower. Been a bit disappointed with the zinnias, but uh, 
they're about to flower. We'll see what they do. Antirhinum's looking pretty. A pretty pink antirhinum. Right next to some more of those pretty pink cosmos. Lovely. And those marigolds have to go in the vegetable garden. I got those from the market in Clitheroe. Two pounds for six lovely plants. Ain't that good? Nice. As you can see, very new, only just done yesterday. Oh, the first of the beds that are in this slightly shadier part of the garden. So I put in, just to fill it up for now, because I didn't have very much available, a couple of liatris that I had left um, in the back garden, up in the veg garden that I brought on from bulbs. There's some azinia, there's some um, dahlias, four dahlias. Down the middle there, one, two, three, four. There's some poppies and there's another lupin. So I'm quite pleased with that. It'll do for this year. Let it get going. That blue flower from over there, I'm going to divide. I think it's going to make about three plants. So one of those will come into this bed here. The other thing that we did was move this honeysuckle. It was on the side of the house and it was falling to bits. Look at all the canes that are still in there. Need to get all these out. I can use those somewhere else, so I'll get those out in a minute. But it's got very small flowers with no scent, but it's quite pretty. So we've allowed it to stay, but I've planted it in the wooden tub that it was in at the side of the house into the ground just to give it a bit more root depth but also because it's already broken through the bottom of it so the roots will find their way out of the bottom it had broken through while it was at the side of the house but it's my intention to train it so it covers this whole fence way along there and beyond the trees down the front and it should do it as well if, it, if the last honeysuckle that I had is anything to go by hanging on for dear life on the crevice edge down here <laughs> we've got lavender which is uh, looking very pretty and smelling very gorgeous the golden rod has uh, star of the show status at the moment beautiful these are the dahlias that I did cut in oh wow they're so strong they're looking absolutely magnificent they're about to come into flower They've got some seed heads here. This one's going to be a yellow one. Ooh, first clues as to what they are. Because I really have no idea. Like I said, they were part of a mixed bag of tubers that I bought very cheaply. And there's some more, not quite as advanced as that bottom pot. But still, these and the pot up there were the ones that got absolutely ravished by slugs. That I had to take into the greenhouse and I think they've come back quite nicely I'm really pleased so I think we'll have flowers from all of that and that's that trailing white allison that I bought for 50p for like 12 plants something crazy and this is another pot of the dahlias oh, that looks like that's going to be what do you think either white or yellow hard to tell at the moment or oh, yellow I think anyway see what they are when they come through my beautiful <laughs> doggy hello you've been a good boy yes you are you always are marigolds beautiful marigolds and then we've got another part of dahlias here sitting in the eye the blue sitting at the front of the house and that's from the white Alison that the other day looked dead. I watered everything yesterday and it seems to be perking up again already. So, there we go. The most beautiful hanging basket in the world. Let's see if we can turn it a little. Look at that. Is that not pretty? <laughs> I love it. Lovely. fuchsias are just about to start bursting open that lovely I say lovely a lot don't I it's dead head there let's just remove that is that the only one yeah 
there. That one can have another deer. Aren't they pretty, those petunias? What a colour. They're much deeper red, I think, than they look on the screen. Look at these little purple flowers. No idea what they are. I can't remember. I've got the label from this thingy inside. I bought all these little plants just from being in bargains. They were cheap as chips. And look how prettily they're filling out. They do look beautiful. I just wanted to fill you in on how the flower beds had gone and what was going on in there. I'm going to sign off now and then I'm going to go and make another video. So you'll see me in the same clothes. I do change. <laughs> um, thank you for watching. It's been a pleasure as always. If you've liked what you've seen, do please like and subscribe. Thumbs up and all that sort of stuff. I hope I'll see you next time.